Hello and welcome to the Media Rumble podcast. I am Chitranshu and we have a very special guest today. We have Alex Chapko. Uh Alex is uh the general manager at Piano. Uh Piano is a SaaS company that does a bunch of stuff for publishers right from subscription management to content rec- recommendation and data analysis. Uh Piano works with some of the biggest uh, publications i- across the world including BBC. So I'm very curious to uh pick Alex brain uh because Piano, as far as I am concerned Piano and Alex has uh access to data more than any other publisher so I'm very curious to talk about Alex's own journey Piano the kind of solution Piano offers and also what are the kind of challenges Alex sees uh for the Indian news market so Alex thanks for taking out the time uh uh and coming down uh, for Media Rumble thanks for having me Great. So is this is your first time or this is your second time in India, right? How That are you correct. finding India? How have your meetings been uh, with Indian publishers? Well, you ask two very different <laughs> questions. <laughs> How I'm correct. finding India yes. and the meeting with publishers. Uh you know, I've been working with Indian market for 10 years almost, but uh shame on me august this year was the first time i came to india and you know definitely see it in in person was way more intense experience i would say uh for me as a person living in europe and you know like to be everything very organized uh but it was you know great experience anyway because many of the people um meeting old friends and uh, it was great to meet with all of them Correct. So Alex, uh you know I want to start off with your journey. So while I was sort of looking up and doing the research, so I want you to just briefly talk about your journey before Piano. Uh if I'm correct, you founded a company that was named Newsmate. Yes. So could you tell us your journey and like like what was the path you followed before Piano happened? Sure. So uh in 2013, uh, basically me and the uh, co-founder of Newsmate, uh, Dimash and Deba, we uh, Uh, started newsmate based on our vision that uh, we can build a really great recommendation engine uh, for people to be able to discover the content they care about so we started actually with a more consumer based product that was a news aggregator right after google deprecated um uh, google oh my god i already forgot google reader i think it was the rss aggregator and uh, we basically went through various uh, pivots and changes of the business model we quickly discovered that in a consumer base uh, mm. business there are not a lot of chances to uh, build Got a it. successful um, and growing model because we had like 180 competitors including guys like Flipboard uh who raised 100 million dollars and still mm. been not profitable. So w- with the situations we came into the B2B world and started working with uh news media companies uh tried to first in the US market from Ukraine which was very challenging so we you know started to build our client base closer to us in Eastern Europe and then s- gradually expanding and I think in 2000 end of 2014 we started working with times group correct with a few of their properties uh, doing uh, personalized automated newsletters mm. and that's how our journey in news media started basically correct and uh, uh you know we were growing uh to the extent where we became an interesting player for other solution provider for news media companies and we met piano on the basis of reselling our software uh but during a series of discussions they said that guys listen we need this type of capabilities within our platform so they offered the acquisition and that's how we ended being part of piano in 2018 kare kare tell me this and i'm asking you this uh, alex because you've been an entrepreneur also often designing products or designing tech solution for news companies essentially a double edged sword right because at least i'm not talking with the bigger uh, or the legacy media players but usually news organizations have limited tech resources have limited tech bandwidth so they're more likely uh, to outsource their tech needs or use like third party uh, services but then the flip side to that is that often these smaller news organization or smaller publishers they often don't have the bandwidth to say like afford a more expensive service or a product that has already established itself so in in that case like is it, is it difficult to operate in a market like india like for example i know because you are here obviously to speak at media rumble but you are also speaking with indian publishers uh, uh, for piano 
so one is if you could just reflect on that like like which is the dichotomy that smaller news publishers want to uh, use third party services or use saas products like piano but they have limited bandwidth second when you interact with indian publishers what are the what do you think are the problem or challenges that are unique to the indian market oh i i have so many thoughts on that and it's a really good question so on the first part i think this the economy is really interesting because in both cases there are always exceptions right so i'm not talking about uh, some rule uh, there are different companies who see them in a different way some indian companies saying that the only one that are better than they are are new york times and washington post and the rest in the world performing worse okay. i don't want to talk about the names here <laughs> i think i know <laughs> which publisher is this but okay uh, yeah but there are always companies who are trying to get as much help as possible even having all the possible resources in the world and uh, i would say that this our you know best spot right because we're trying to bring the knowledge we're not saying we're the best mm. we just have something that others might not have and uh, uh, both big companies who realize they don't want to learn only on their own mistakes and they are ready to pay for this experience and for the platform that is built based on the experience of different companies to get this knowledge suck up into their Uh, culture but also smaller companies i think it depends on the business model and the way how, how they estimate roi right we see in middle sized companies in india who i would say doing relatively well but when you start talking about proper subscription business model they're saying oh we will never make 30000 dollars per year right Correct. and i'm like why would in the first place you start the business if you are not planning to make Correct. more than this amount uh, but i i also see smaller guys that we talk with you about who have a really clear calculation of the return of investment and they understand that even paying 30 40 000 per year mm. taking into account limited resources they have is a much better investment because they will be able to make 3 4 times of this in the new revenue that they are not making today or they will spend 5 times trying to build it on their own with limited resources and still going through the same bumps right so that is in general how i see this the economy depending on you know what type of publisher we're talking if we're talking about more specifically on the indian market uh, i would say there are several challenges especially taking into account that now we are operating not only in subscription space but we're also trying to help to um create unified view of the customer across different channels and type of the content you mentioned our client bbc who is using us across many different verticals they operate in 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 radio in ott in news business and they need to understand you know what is the value of uh, uh, they're providing to the user what is the lifetime value of the customer and all of these data points to then make decision uh further up the chain uh, but also advertising revenue right and of course indian market i I, th i think it would be fair to, fair to say that 90 ish percent of the revenue is coming from advertising and uh with all of the changes that google is representing on the market uh we're seeing a lot of potential also to help publishers to be stronger in this game and to gain uh more control over their audience data that was historically always somewhere right. with some advertising uh providers so i would say that probably top three things i'm noticing is that mm, indian publishers rarely admit that they have problems hmm. right mm -hmm. and probably it's not just for the indian publishers but it's quite a common case and that is why it's very difficult to have an open conversation but, to understand but why do you think that is like because essentially if you're looking for a product or a service you're looking because there is a specific problem or an issue that you want addressed right why yeah. do you think when you're meeting indian publishers uh, they're doing that i think there is a lot of philosophical <laughs> things to this question because uh it might be part of the culture that you know you might not know what you don't know hmm. and when you do not um uh, you do not have the basis to compare yourself to right there is not a lot of successful and widely discussed examples on the market Get you it. feel that you're doing great right and why would you fix something that is working hmm. but when you try to be open and you look and speak more to the international experience so the, just a step aside right one of the most frequent things i'm hearing from the indian publishers is that it is great that you operate on 100 markets but mm. indian market is completely different right mm. and it's funny because i'm hearing the same from argentina i'm hearing okay. the same from south africa i'm hearing the same from ukraine and actually 99% of other places 
people behavior in the essence is the same around the world. Of course, you have some nuances to the payment provider things or price levels, right? Mm. But it doesn't change the basis of the human behavior. If you have great content and you have the audience that value it, you can build strong relationship that will allow you to monetize it. So I think that uh, you know, if Indian publishers would be more open to this international experience, they would admit that they have way more space to grow. Correct. Correct. So that is the main thing. So in terms of issues and challenges, like what you're saying is broadly that the challenges are same across the world, but there might be some nuances uh, which are unique uh, to Correct. the market. Uh, just tell me, just so our users also understand what exactly uh, Piano does and what is the kind of service it offers. Could you specifically tell me that what are the user or publisher needs that Piano says that, okay, we can fix this? I would say it's three main pillars or three main areas where we help our clients is to uh, have a comprehensive understanding of their audience is to build engagement with the audience. So you have loyal fan base on a long term basis. And third is to monetize this audience. Got it. If we switch to more detailed use cases, it may come down to the business models that publishers are using. So if it's a subscription business model, then it is about how you understand the um, complete journey of the user from the first interaction with your brand, maybe in social media onto your website or through search traffic, and how you develop this relationship into engaged audience, known audience, paying audience, and then, you know, loyal. So I think segmenting audience. the user depending yeah, basically on basically creating, but it's about defining the stages of the user journey, creating personalized micro experience on each of the stage to maximize relevance for the reader. So that is about subscription in advertising. It's a long topic and probably we will need more time for that. But, uh, you know, with um, changing landscape mostly driven by people desire for privacy of their data Correct. publishers getting more potential control over their relationship and the possibility to monetize this relationship in the advertising business model mm. uh, because reliance on google going to be weaker with third party cookies deprecation yeah. and it opens the possibilities for publishers to provide more value to advertisers Correct, correct. I'll, I'll come to the third party data bit. Uh, but when you're in India, what do you think, like which product is like more in demand? Is it more on the advertising side? Is it more on the subscription side? Uh, you've been in the Indian market for long. Do you think the expectation or the requirement has also changed, right? Because at least during COVID, a lot of publishers pivot, did pivot, quote unquote, did pivot uh, to subscription or reader revenue. So when you come here, like some of your biggest client, do you think they're more interested in advertisement re revenue or like reader revenue? I would say still re reader revenue is prevailing. Uh, and for many publishers, um, they see it as absolute future of the business. Uh, not a lot have faced to say that it's something that can become a prevailing revenue stream in the even midterm. So mm. many of them are seeing it as a strong revenue stream, but still advertising will have much bigger ratio. Um, at the same time, what is interesting is that there are, you know, there are always innovators on the market who start in first, like News Lounder, right? And uh, there are guys who are big, but they're still hoping to see uh, success enough, big enough to convince them that it's a, it's a guarantee. Like okay. if they step into this game, there is no chance they will fail, right? And there is. N there is no market or you know vertical where there is such a guarantee. So I think the main problem, even with the, in the conversation where people saying yes, subscription revenue for us is the main thing, is that people are not ready to put their skin in the game. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think that is what's um, decelerating the potential adoption of this business model in the Indian market. Correct, correct. Interesting. Now, so okay, so let's just say if you are often meeting uh, CEOs or business owners. I'm guessing a lot of publishers who you are meeting, they believe in the future of reader revenue, but at the current moment, it's essentially 80, 90% is just advertisement revenue. Correct. So even if they want to invest, that's that's like in the long run, right? Okay, that if I invest in subscription revenue now, maybe two years, three, three years down the line, it will be worth the effort. In that aspect, is it difficult to convince like business owners that, okay, you need to invest now, but this is something that will reap rewards later on or or, or, you, or do you think it's not really unique to India? It happens like globally. 
It happens globally, but I would say in India, I see more cases like that where people, if they decide to invest, they're trying to make it with the minimum possible risk. And usually risk is defined by amount of money. Hmm. So even you have a significant margin on your advertising revenue, you're ready to invest more in growing advertising revenue than okay. allocate it into something that is risky, not guaranteed, but you believe it's a vision, right? Mm. So kind of support your belief with money. That is where Indian market is quite often struggling. And it leads usually to the fact that even big companies are putting not enough money and resources into, they're not committed, right? Mm. Uh, quite often subscription revenue is perceived, and I think it's again, historic factor of uh, not only Indian market, but any market where news media was primarily driven by ad revenue is a mindset of the editorial team that is more focused on something that will attract more eyeballs, Correct, yeah. right? As a result, changing this mindset because subscription business model is like building your own startup, you, mm. you know, in B2B space, SaaS space, doesn't matter. You need to switch in the product mindset. You need to start analyzing what my audiences value me for what type of content people really perceive as unique, right? And if I don't have it, it just put in the meter paywall on top of that, not gonna ch change and the perception. Moreover, it most likely will, you know, create a certain friction with the audience because they will say, listen, I've been getting the same content for free, yeah. no zero value added, and now you're saying I need to pay, right? Sorry. Mm -hmm. So I see that companies who switch into this mindset and ready to invest in the editorial team, ready to invest in technology to learn and test and optimize, because it's another factor. Most successful of our clients are the ones who continuously test and change. It's mm -hmm. not about launch and everything will be at work, like hands off, right? We see it, this mistake across different markets and they always fail. Those who saying, okay, great, that is the first version. It didn't work. We continue because that is our vision. Like, stick to your purpose. So um, this is where I, I would love if you know more Indian companies would change this mindset instead of you know focusing on eyeballs or you know eyeballs is great. Mm -hmm. Ad revenue will continue to drive the market, but you need to allocate resources for this different mindset, and that that will change the game. Correct, correct. You know, since you. Uh look at uh, publishers and data from across the world, we have enough data to show now that subscription growth is stagnating, right? We uh, have had tremendous spike when at least, for, for example, when Trump was in power during the COVID pandemic also, but now globally it's stagnating. Another th trend that we are seeing is that especially something like that's what has happened in US, for example, right? So you have two, three publishers who are taking the majority of your subscription revenue or redo revenue. So you have the likes of New York Times, you have, you have Washington Post, and maybe a couple of other publishers, and then everyone else is struggling, right? So in the long run, there will be consolidation within subscription revenue or redo revenue also. Now, come to think of it, especially in a market like India, like News Laundry has been doing reader revenue or subscription for 10 years, right? Because for us, we wanted to do subscription or reader revenue, not because it was the in thing or like ad revenue was plummeting. We, we intrinsically believe that the kind of journalism that we want to do, it's only possible through reader revenue or, or subscription. And that's why up until now, it's like News Laundry, a, a large part of our energy went into convincing people to pay for news. So we had the slogan, when advertisers pay, advertisers are served and the public pays, the public is served, right? So we had to spend a lot of time and energy to convince the user or the reader, why is it that they should pay for news? Right. But now all of a sudden, especially in the last two years, ad revenue has uh, plummeted, especially in a market like India. A lot of your ad revenue comes from the government. And obviously it's, it's directly linked with the kind of coverage or the kind of editorial stance you are uh, you are taking. But now we are in a at least in the Indian market. There are a lot of people or publishers who are asking for subscription. So let's just say if you were to think of just like pure digital outlets, almost everyone has some form of real revenue. And this includes right from News Laundry and Quint to News news minute and so on and so forth. Now in India, there's still a very small uh, uh, chunk of population who's actually paying for news. So even if you were to look at, okay, let's just say if you are looking at the US market and maybe that's something that will happen here also, at some point there'll be consolidation with the Indian market because eventually you will not pay for more than one or two publishers, right? Because everyone has like a limited wallet. Is, would you agree with that kind of analysis? How, how do you think will work with someone like Piano? Will that make Piano more valuable? Because then 
uh, with all these companies will be fighting with each other for like better segmentation of data, better services, better products like Piano. What is your take on this? Very interesting question. Uh, I would rather disagree with the statement and I will, exp will explain why. First of all, I think um, there are these general statements and you know, you're of course not the first one uh, who is saying that you know there is a for certain decline in the subscription revenue but it always relative and based on the benchmark we're seeing is that of course covid times uh, there was uh, unprecedented growth right uh, for example in europe it was 2.5 times uh, on a quarterly basis comparing to previous year pre covid uh, in the us it i think was 1.5 times i think it still was like around 80% uh, that was because of changing patterns, right? The people were sitting more at home, people were looking for uh, uh, trustworthy sources of information. And this year, the revenue, subscription revenue wasn't growing in this uh, level of pace because mainly of, you know, so much drama happening around the world and certain um, people tired from, you know, hearing drama all the time. But if you look at absolute numbers, the subscription revenue been growing. It's just been growing 30, 40, 20 percent, depending on the publisher, depending on the market. Uh, there was maybe a slightly higher churn rate uh, because people during COVID times who subscribe, especially on annual plans, they're like understood that maybe that's not the way they want to consume uh, news anymore. But our clients continue to grow, right? Uh, just maybe not in, you know, two times. Uh, uh, not with four. the same velocity. Yeah. Uh, I definitely agree with you that there is a lot of consolidation happening, especially on the U.S. market, where you know hundreds of thousands of local newspaper businesses they cannot survive on their own uh, on the ad revenue, and they probably might not have big enough audience to even uh, survive with the uh, subscription revenue, taking into account the U.S. costs. Um, but it's not happening because people are not ready to pay. Uh, at the same time, I would also say that. Um, if we're talking about Indian market, I do not, th we're switching back to the topic we started with you with, is that it's not enough just to be in general news market, right? There is enough of general news. And uh, if you really want to build successful business model, you need to be unique in something. In advertising space, through the video content you're making, through the social content you're making, through streaming services, through podcasts, through the news articles, through investigative journalism, right? Uh, we've seen this long time ago with Bonnier Publications who decided to get rid of breaking news, right? They're creating content that will be valuable one year after you discover the article. Uh, in many cases, Ringel, like Serge Springer, uh, is doing the same thing. We're seeing it with many other guys. So I think it uh, the, the change that you are talking about will probably accelerate uh, either merge of the companies who are not able to innovate in terms of finding their you know unique DNA, uh, and we also see the race of the companies hmm. who will understand how to create this uniqueness on the market. Correct, correct. Okay, okay. So basically, I, I get it. Essentially, you have to stand out for users to pay for your content you have to offer them something that they are not getting elsewhere correct okay so just to wrap up the reader revenue bit there are multiple reasons people pay for news right someone might pay for news because they want access uh, to a specific uh, section or a story uh, some people pay for uh, news because they believe in whatever is the mission statement of the news organization and some people believe because that uh, especially uh, in countries like India where quality journalism might be scarce that this is something for democracy you need media to thrive and uh, for media who do quality journalism they should be supported right so for example in our case what we have seen that whenever we do a appeal that is more based on emotion that okay this is what's happening in the news market this is what's the kind of news you're getting if you like the news that we do you have to support us directly right now in your experience i have a two part question is there a specific kind of appeal that works better like and when i'm saying i'm accounting for all right transactional you pay you get access to a paywall content you pay because we will not survive until you pay and b does it differ from market to market and what i mean by that is let's just say if you are 
a European publisher. Maybe there they understand and they've been paying for uh, online content or they've been paying for services on the internet at large. So they understand the value of paying. So for them, uh, an appeal around paywall would work better. General, uh, and maybe it will be a too short of an answer, but emotional reasons always work better, hmm. always. Whether it's Germany, whether it's Brazil, whether it's India, whether it's Japan. Uh, I think it's related just to the emotional connection right, that you have with your audience. And if your audience experiencing emotion through the content that you're producing, through the stories that, because we're all in the storytelling uh, mm. business essentially, uh, you have much higher chances to get support from the user when you are giving, again, emotional reasons to uh, pay money. Uh, of course, you know, there are different markets where, as you said, people get used to paid news because I think in Scandinavia, 80 plus percent of publication charging for news, right? There are reasons behind it also because there is so much of, uh, you know, language barrier might be, right? Not a lot of uh, media companies around the world might be writing in Norwegian or Danish languages about things happening locally. And that is another reason why I believe India market has such a big potential because there are so many communities, so many dialects and languages where publishers can really stand out just by focusing on their community. Uh, we're seeing this type of approach succeed in many different markets, whether it's Montenegro or you know, India. That is why, uh, from my point of view, um, publishers, and I'm sorry for repeating myself, publishers who will be focusing on understanding of their audience and understanding their deep reasons behind interactions with their content and focusing on giving more of that will have much more traction but with monetization of this uh, of correct, their content. Correct, correct. Okay, uh, I just want to move back uh, to third party data and us moving slowly to a world where there's less and less of cookie based data. So just so our audience also is on the same page, first party data is let's just say data that you uh, gather through surveys, through form, uh, first party data is something that you're tracking at your own end, whereas third party data will be like data that is being captured uh, in a different domain uh, to, to sum it up. Now, given that because both users and, and publications are increasingly very conscious of privacy, of course, there's GDPR, there are a lot of regulations also around user data and user privacy. A, how important do you think it is for publishers to build that kind of capacity where they're capturing zero party or first party data at their own? And B, where do you think Piano as a product fits in there, right? Because you have like a multiplicity of offering. You're also offering advertising. You're also offering data segmentation. So importance of first party and uh, uh, zero party data and where does like Piano fit in there? Uh Zero and first party data is going to be and is already essential. I would say critical for the survival of the media business. Uh, whether it is business focused on subscription or advertising revenue. Just a side note why subscription for subscription is important because again, in order for you to serve best your audience, you need to know it. In order to know it, you need to collect data and analyze the data, then to make changes in the communication with your readers. Third party uh, data is probably not going away. Uh, so party cookies as a mechanism is going away, even though Google keep delaying this mm. <laughs> uh, this moment. But they uh, were supposed to phase it out by end of this year, but they have again first end of 2021, yeah. then 2023, and now they move it again to the end of 2023, which somehow related to the deprecation of their existing Google Analytics Universal product, which is also heavily reliant on third party cookies. Anyway. Uh, Currently, most of the advertising revenue is coming through programmatic deals. Uh, in case of Indian market, 80% of the deals served through Google uh, demand side platform, right? So advertisers is buying inventory on publisher side through the Google platform. And they're primarily relying on data points such as social demographics and in rarer cases, but still intent data. No one knows how this data is collected. No one knows about the accuracy. Uh, but the match rates are horrible. So everyone okay. recognizes that this data is not accurate, but no one has a better way to do it. Hmm. And what this change that you talk about is bringing, it allows publishers through the relationship they have with the audience, start collecting this data themselves 
when you're reading the article about the car, why don't you ask what type of car you're owning, right? Mm. Or uh, what type of professional you're having or what type of education uh, you uh, received. Again, contextually through the interaction, through the content. And Piana allows, based on this data set, to build lookalike models that basically looking into the behavioral patterns of readers who are giving you these answers mm. and extrapolating these behavioral patterns to the unknown anonymous audience. That is actually how you know Google and other companies who are doing audience research are doing. They're doing the survey on any different domains, like what's your age, what's your gender, right? But they're not getting hundreds of millions of responses. They might be getting thousands of responses, and then they're applying machine learning to extrapolate this data uh, through different domains. The problem is that currently this data exchange between different domains using third-party cookie, one is gone, publishers who do not have their own first party data set, they're, I, I don't want to use this word, but they're screw up. Yeah. So uh, that is why understanding it earlier and why Piana, I think, uh, is doing quite well in this domain is because our main experience was on incentivizing users hmm. to do certain action, right? Through understanding their interests, serving uh, relevant content, driving relevant messaging. So the same approach, and this is the moment where subscription department was never closer to the advertising department because by understanding how you can monetize the audience and how you can incentivize readers to share data mm. with you to share money with you you create a much better foundation for your advertising business because you're going to be sitting on much higher quality data set and then it means you can bring higher quality of data to advertiser because for advertiser it will be a simple choice yeah. we either keep doing it with google and we are doing it based on some very broad cohorts when, mm. again, we don't know how it's going to operate and whether it's going to be applicable outside of Chrome. Or we work directly with publishers who give us very specific and clear and transparent information on how the data sets were built, how accurate they are, and that will lead to higher click-through rates. So money of the advertisers will be spent wiser. Makes sense. In, in your experience, when you are uh, pitching and meeting uh, CEOs and business, do they understand uh, these nuances? Like, for example, if I were to uh, ask you to compare, say, like an Indian publisher, CEO or a business owner to someone is in Europe, do you see a difference in, in terms of data maturity and how much they understand the space? Because in India, our business decisions are still primarily either driven by editorial needs or they are entirely driven by an ad revenue system, right? And when I say ad revenue, these are not so much like programmatic or like data-based advertising programming. These are mostly because the ads are coming from the corporates or they're coming from the government. So is, is there a difference in the kind of understanding? Do, do Indian publishers understand uh, as good as like other publishers? Yes. If, we, if we're going to be talking about majority, I would say or yes. Or are you just saying this to please Indian publishers who <laughs> you're going to meet next? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's it's a reality, um, and we're trying to change it, right? We we are working a lot on educating the market and explaining and showcasing the, based on the numbers why uh, it is necessary to understand for the publishers that they need to own the data, uh, but they also need to uh, properly sell this data to advertiser. They need to explain and be able to sell the value of this data to advertiser. Uh, in Europe, for example, uh, there are numerous data alliances, publishing alliances, who are not just uh, built for political purposes, but also for the data purposes, where they're joining data sets. Because there is a simple thing. If you look at the distribution of the advertising uh, money of the advertisers, 85% are going through Facebook and Google platforms. Mm. And the rest of 15% are going to you know, display ads or native ads uh, on the publisher sites. And when publishers on Indian market saying, oh, I'm competing with publisher A or competing with publisher B, if for advertising revenue, like, listen, where you're competing for the 10% of the market, you're mm. not competing with other publishers, mm. right? You need really focus on the big chunk. 
And in Europe, publishers realized that. They understood that if they join their efforts, they have much more chances to you know, give a fight to Facebook and Google huh. and provide more value to advertisers than these big platforms. Just so you didn't know, like there are a publisher. So for example, we have defamation case by other media publications. I think you'll have a good time asking Indian publishers to come together. But we are almost out of time, so I'll ask you uh, a last question. If you could change one thing about the Indian news market, what would it be? Openness to change. Do you think is in general there is reluctance uh, to change or to try new things? I believe yes. I believe if uh, people would perceive with more open minds uh, experience, it's like about traveling, right? Majority of the problems of the specific country or nation is usually coming from the population is not knowing about alternatives, that mm. there is a better way to live, that there is a better way to do certain things. And it necessarily means we need to change everything, right? Sometimes it's enough to go to Japan and see their toilets to say that mm. I want the same one in my room, right? Uh, same might go with any different small things. Uh, that you want to improve. And if you're open to perceive this experience and with open mind, understand if you can apply it and if yes, how it can benefit my audience and my business at the end of the day, I think the pace of growth of the market and overall culture of the market uh, would change much faster. Great. Thanks a lot for taking out the time, Alex. I hope our viewers and listeners uh, could uh, take insights from this conversation and uh, could this conversation helps them understand the Indian news market. There are very few conversations because most of the conversations around news and news markets are primarily from an editorial uh, and, and from a content wise. I hope this helps them understand things from a business or a product side also. Thank you very much. Thank you.